in the evening in uh, Bali. And uh, it's great to see you all. Um, that um, that's the, before we start with the topic of the, our webinar, let me just brief you about the Internet Governance Forum that I attended in Bali. Obviously, the Internet Governance Forum was uh, uh, marked by the Snowden, uh, post Snowden developments, which are apparently what I'm following for new shaking Europe as well after revelation of the spying of uh, Angela, Angela Merkel. And uh, we had today an interesting session which I moderated and it took me quite a bit of uh, time and uh, creative energy on uh, post Snowden uh, Internet Governance with the U.S. Uh, State Department people on the board, among others, representatives of Google and other players. And it was it was very interesting session which started with a lot of uh, uh, difficult uh, questions and I would say uh, U.S. bashing, which one can expect in this 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 year after all development. But later on, we managed to turn it into really inclusive. Uh, inclusive and uh, reasonable discussion what can be done in this situation. And the session lasted for almost three hours. One of the major breakthroughs during the IGF and this session is uh, uh, initiative by Brazil was the first main target of the Snowden uh, of the NSA uh, uh, surveillance and spying. And ICANN, there is a joint initiative to organize the Internet Governance Summit in 2000. 14, in May 2014, many are seeing this as a sort of face saving uh, formula for the United States because uh, now the situation is very difficult for the United States. They are cornered because of the revelations. And uh, it is important to, spend, to find some sort of a way out which could be both uh, uh, helpful for the world to stop this type of spying, massive spying and surveillance. And also out for the United States. There is a strong pressure from Google and the Silicon Valley company for losing customers and their business model is based on trust. Therefore, there is a strong pressure from them on the US government to do something. So we can expect, at least based on the comments that I got from the diplomats uh, from the United States, that some breakthrough and proposal from the Obama administration will come over the next few weeks. They're currently conducting uh, internal review to see what to do with, uh, with, uh, with, the, with the overall situation. If you have any question about uh, update what's going on, and uh, please let me let me know. I will also switch on the chat. Uh, Stefano, yes, when I'm in Bali, you can get some light on your face. Virginia, your face was in the dark. Yes, very really nice to hear you on from Bali. Okay, Bali, where is the seat? Well, Stefano, unfortunately, uh, it is now dark and uh, our hotel is, uh, well, 10 kilometers from the sea. We will go tomorrow to, to enjoy a bit of sea. I think our uh, big data was a useful one, considering the increased attention on privacy and data after the case. That's correct, uh, Stefano, and there is growing, growing interest to this topic. And I can tell you from Internet Governance Forum, there is a lot of, lot of interest. I also published an article in EuroPolitics, and I will send you a photo, uh, PDF file, which apparently raised a lot of attention in Brussels, uh, arguing that data is the oil, and uh, 500 million people of the European Union are in a way oil of Europe uh, for the for the digital economy. But you, I will send it send it in the, in the follow up uh, to our session. Uh, do you have any question on uh, internet governance, Bali, surveillance, political dynamics of, the, of this process? Well, if we if we then don't have any question, uh, let us move to the main topic of our webinar: TV broadcasting and impact impact of so-called uh, CNN effect on diplomacy. Any other issue, no issue on top of snow then uh, second of all issues related to data protection, privacy. There was a lot of discussion on uh, on the way of the ICANN, future role of the ICANN, which currently manages the 
root zone file and which is the address book of the internet. Strong pressure to, uh, for internationalization of the ICANN, which is currently uh, controlled by the U.S. government. Quite, quite. Uh, there was uh, quite strong presence from Iran and well accepted presence from Iran and uh, Diplo will probably run capacity building program for Persian speaking countries in internet governance. It is more or less agreed and that, that's, that's one of the uh, interesting developments that Iran is trying very hard to get out of the current isolation. What are going to, uh, Stefano, what are going to be the hot topics for uh, Bali follow up? It's mainly this proposal by uh, Brazil and ICANN to organize a summit on internet governance in Rio in 2000, uh, May 2014, which should agree some sort of deal for the future internet governance and provide the United States with way out and face saving out of the Snowden uh, uh, revelation. That's definitely going to be some sort of, of intergovernmental, mix of intergovernmental and uh, multi-stakeholder approach for internet governance. This is the more or less agreed. Now, uh, back to tele-broadcasting and the impact of CNN effects on diplomacy. Uh, television set was uh, invented in uh, 1926 and uh, six years later, it was uh, the first commercial service started with the BBC. And since then, uh, TV was for a long, long time the main uh, entertainment and, uh, and uh, medium. Uh, as we can see from this drawing, used by families worldwide. Television is still a powerful tool, and as we learned last time from our discussion on technology, one technology doesn't replace the other technology. Television is now more and more broadcasted via internet, and there is a push from YouTube, from other services, to perform some sort of function of, uh, of the television. Therefore, uh, uh, television sector is under a lot of pressure. As you saw from the protests in uh, Athens, uh, where the, the government just closed the television and it was, in a way, accepted by the general public. It is not anymore crucial medium as it used to be 30 years ago. You probably can recall those famous manuals how to do the coup d'etat, mainly in Africa, and uh, there were basically two, uh, three, two or three activities. One is to control post office because of telegraph and communication with outside, and the other activity was to control the uh, TV station, uh, TV or radio station. Now, uh, television is not Today is not in the competition with the internet. It's not as powerful as it was a long time. Now, when it comes to uh, impact of CNN effect on diplomacy, it is prob it is very uh, typically located uh, uh, to the time of the first Iraq War, 1991, when uh, CNN for the first time played a vital role in the shaping of the public opinion. And it was the first war report which was broadcasted over TV. Uh, CNN uh, made a huge impact on the shaping the public opinion, and it helped uh, Western efforts in opinion support for the uh, attack on uh, on uh, Iraq at the time. Uh, it was. The, then followed by uh, establishing later on by establishing other TV stations and the more recently uh, CNN effect on diplomacy was mainly related to the Middle East, opening of the uh, TV station Al Jazeera, uh, uh, Arabic TV, and other other players who try to capture the audience of the, the TV audience of the. Arab streets and Arab uh, Arab countries. Now, uh, one can ask how powerful and uh, is TV and TV broadcasting in uh, today's diplomacy. I wouldn't underestimate it, it, its power in spite of the growing usage of the internet. TV is uh, still uh, important in shaping public opinion and uh, general public 
uh, still relies a lot on the on TV TV station. Uh, diplomats felt a challenge back in '91 uh, from uh, from the TV because uh, their monopoly in a way in the reporting the event was challenged, and for the first time, ministers of foreign affairs had the uh, information before uh, before their diplomats. And I'm still remembering, I was a junior Yugoslav diplomat that there was uh, for the first time TV set brought in the offices of the ministry of foreign affairs. And for exactly following what was going on in uh, Iraq during the, the campaign for the for the for the for the Iraq. Therefore it was the first challenge to this reporting or presentation function of uh, of diplomatic services and diplomats. That continued later on with the uh, with mainly emergence of the internet and the later on tools like Wikipedia and nowadays Twitter. The evolution uh, started this ex accelerated uh, challenge to the role of diplomats as the first conveyor of information from the sending state to the receiving state started being challenged with the, with the TV. And this process has been going on since today. And today it is mainly uh, the challenge tools that are challenging the role of diplomats when it comes to media are uh, uh, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Wikipedia. Now, uh, how did the diplomacy react in this way? And there is interesting writing by Nabil Fakhmi, who used to be a U.S. diplomat, U.S. ambassador for a long time, for almost 10 years in Washington, D.C., and he's now Minister of Foreign Affairs of uh, Egypt. And he realized that when he moved to the United States, he realized very early that uh, first doesn't make a sense to compete with media, and uh, he started using the media for his own advantage. Therefore, he broadcasted, uh, he relied on broadcasting of CNN, and he was forwarding media coverage back to Capital in Cairo. And uh, in reporting, he focused mainly on uh, on the value-added element and his comments and the uh, specificities that could be found in the general media. Therefore, that process uh, of uh, Changing the role of diplomats, especially in the in the reporting diplomatic uh, reporting uh, function, is uh, I think the major impact of uh, uh, CNN aspect and follow up on the, the internet later on on diplomacy. Now diplomats also started grasping the use of uh, TV uh, for public diplomacy, and this is another channel. The, the first one is information gathering. The second channel is Public diplomacy, and here uh, we face many courses uh, media and diplomacy where diplomats were trained how to use uh, uh, CNN and other TV stations to convey their message. And they realized the power of this tool and they uh, started preparing, acquiring new skills, which was very important how to deliver interviews and how to use uh, uh, this, this tool. Uh, Power of CNN uh, and later on Al, Al Jazeera is usually associated with the concept of uh, soft power. Uh, there are few countries which have a part of power of ser powerful services. It's mainly uh, United States with CNN. Al Jazeera, uh, where Qatar uh, financed this operation and over, let's say, period of 10 years developed quite respectable TV, TV station and uh, quite objective in the coverage of the event. You have also BBC as a uh, UK, as a British traditional, um, still objective, uh, still powerful uh, uh, TV station. Europe created Euronews, mixed success, and uh, we have then uh, recently Russia creating their uh, uh, Russian international TV. China has also similar uh, attempts. But nothing can be compared with the power of CNN and recently Al Jazeera. This is more or less the canvas, the uh, painting of the canvas of the impact of the TV on diplomacy. It's two main functions, information gathering and reporting and uh, public diplomacy. This is my short introduction and uh, I'm passing the floor to you for questions.
Sometimes TV is completely shut off for news. Recently, we can take the case of Syria. In in what sense, Stefano, uh, is completely TV in Syria or in general? Good point. Uh, while we're waiting for Stefano's comment, additional comment. Yes, that's 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 correct. Let me just comment on Stefano's. Uh, co uh, he says they cannot rely on TV in, in that case in Syria. That's true. I think the Syrian government uh, prevented uh, the, uh, the banned access to TV crews to Syria and internet reporting or sort of uh, uh, crowd uh, journalism, crowdsourcing journalism or uh, citizen journalism became much more important in the, in the, in the case of Syria. Uh, governments, uh, especially dictatorship, but also other governments who are concerned about their public image and uh, who are worried that uh, media can uh, uh, tarnish their, their image are really trying to prevent access uh, of the TV crews and anyone who can uh, report. Uh, on the, their country. Uh, Ginger is making con co comment, but is TV now outdated since it's one-way communication? Well, that's correct. Uh, uh, TV is one-way communication. There are attempts, you know, almost any TV program is having, has been making attempt to have uh, something like have your say, we want to hear your comments. They're trying to create some sort of interactivity. But it is definitely limited comparing to the internet and what we can have in interactive terms of the internet. Therefore, that one way aspect of the TV is going to be definitely limitation in the, for the future of the internet. Then we have from Diplo to ask questions. Please type, okay, that's instruction how to ask the question. Virginia, I agree with Stefan, we can no longer rely on TV. It is too easy, manipulated, cut off, used as one day broadcast. Completely, completely agreed uh, that it's much easier to manipulate uh, uh, TV than, I don't know, YouTube uh, broadcasting or blog posting or Twitter. From Fran Francesco Vitali, what about the new web TVs and the new services on YouTube? Do you see any evolution of the CNN effect? Very good question, uh, Francesco. It is definitely a new trend uh, and new sort of uh, way of creating uh, TV stations via YouTube or via other internet uh, services. I would make the uh, analogy with the radio station, radio online, and uh, we will have more or less the same phenomenon or more uh, programs basically broadcast into TV, but I don't see real challenge for the traditional TV for time being. Uh, Stefano Balzi is asking, can we consider YouTube an effective tool for public diplomacy? What are the risks? Well, uh, YouTube uh, is uh, carries certain risks when it comes to the authenticity of information and we saw from the some coverage in Syria that uh, it was basically uh, not authentic uh, especially coverage of the of the some massacres and death that they were basically staged. Therefore there is always risk that uh, it can be manipulated. YouTube accepts some sort of a general policy guidelines about the presentation of showing pornographic videos doesn't edit and doesn't, cannot uh, uh, confirm validity of the TV coverage. And it is important to keep in mind. And this is definitely limitation the YouTube. But the parallel is more or less similar with the uh, radio over the internet and traditional radio, or for example, blog posts and news articles in newspapers. In articles in newspapers, uh, have some sort of authority because of the editor's blog post that is in just by the authors. Uh, Virginia Park, perhaps we now need to watch TV on the screen and the Twitter reaction on another. Someday, someday, someday incorporate a tweet feed. It's a very good point. Uh, 
uh, ginger. I'm coming from the comments. From a lot of parallel comments on tweet uh, on the on Twitter, and uh, I think that there will be definitely TV stations or YouTube introducing the Twitter. The point is that uh, it can be used only for some uh, live broadcasting, not just for the playing of the old videos, because Twitter, as we know, has the power when it is linked to the live broadcasting. But uh, good, good. I agree, Stefano, it's interesting point from Virginia. Stefano, what can be the risk that too many people will watch your video? Is it a great way to uh, disseminate information? Well, uh, I would say that uh, you have, uh, let's, let's put it this way, there is a risk that in information gathering that you may get information which are not reliable, it's happened in few cases from Syria. Therefore, you as a diplomat who is, who is following development in Syria uh, may not rely on the um, coverage, TV coverage of images from Syria because they are not authentic or they are fake, they are uh, sort of uh, orchestrated. This is the first point. When it comes to uh, broadcasting, uh, it obviously depends what type of the video you can put. For example, if, if you as a diplomat want to broadcast some information, it uh, definitely depends what type of uh, information you would, you would like to disseminate. And then risk is associated with, uh, with it. Uh, one sort of a risk, uh, let's say, buffer or something that can uh, make risk less prominent is the fact that on YouTube you have so many videos and TV broadcasting. If you are on CNN or BBC or the European Union, it's only one channel and most likely higher visibility. Yes, uh, Stefano, uh, I agree on it is even easier to manipulate YouTube videos compared to TV. That's definitely very, very easy and uh, and uh, it is done done often. Uh, ginger, but when, then the danger is uh, uh, from other videos, not from your own. So that means diplomatic services must monitor YouTube for false information. That that definitely ginger it applies the same logic like for uh, for any any other other source of, uh, source of information. I don't know uh, what are the results, and probably we can hear from uh, from Italy, which has quite a good YouTube service and other ministries of foreign affairs. What is the power, and if there is any research of usability of video, uh, are they accepted by uh, by uh, people? I know that. Uh, Arvin and Diplo has been monitoring use of our videos and image, uh, and uh, uh, cartoon uh, comics uh, on the internet, and we have uh, some results about that. And Arvin can share it with us during the webinar or later on. Stefano Baldi, I wonder if one day we will have a kind of TV a la carte using on demand internet video. Certainly, diplomats should prepare to take the best out of this opportunity. Uh, yes, but in a way, uh, Stefano, uh, YouTube is a la carte, and, but the menu is very, very long and very, very big. And probably there will be a need for some sort of uh, streamlining of this offer on a, on a few few options, and that's, that's definitely definitely debate how we can expect the future development. One has to keep in mind one important development. Uh, it is the way how videos are created and, uh, and uh, uh, organized and uh, uh, how the montage of the videos, preparation videos is done. Uh, well, 20 years ago, it required big studios, major op operations, multi-million projects. I remember, and Arvin can uh, can uh, recall it when we did our video for the World Summit on Information Society almost ten years ago. It was major activity, and it required quite a bit of involvement of staff and special cameras and the other tools. We can see now that the tools for uh, recording, for organizing the videos, are much more uh, easier uh, to use. Therefore, that 
thrashing uh, the, the I'm sorry the entry point into the video production is much lower when it comes to tools. But then there is a risk that this simple tool will attract people who do not have sufficient knowledge about uh, video culture, preparing uh, videos and techniques. Therefore, one one can see uh, massive production of the videos of questionable quality, exactly because of this entry point is much 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 lower. You can easily start using and developing creating videos. But in order to create a good video, high quality video, it is the profession itself which requires a lot of knowledge. And Arvin is a specialist for video production and uh, he knows it quite well. Uh, Stefan Baldi, I wonder if uh, one day we will have a kind of TV. Okay, that's for the question. And then we have Stefan Baldi, yes, the long menu does not help. Uh, uh, from, uh, I suppose this is Arvin. TV stations do have an editor, but that is not the case in the user-generated content, internet, YouTube, other video aggregators. And uh, that just means that we need to develop trust to the users. That is uh, one type of video is, uh, is so-called authentic video with uh, some funny content or uh, Content that uh, that was that was uh, really captured the moment, and it attracts attention regardless of the quality. Uh, but then, when it comes to the rather general videos, the quality is, is an important issue. Now, uh, if we can look into the future, I would say that one interesting development will be uh, video produced with the uh, Google glasses. Um, that's that's basically that we are uh, we will be recording and it's all the Google Glasses are used. We will be recording uh, while uh, while we are moving around and uh, and uh, that's a completely new way of uh, of recording video. You don't have even camera. You have your glasses and whatever you look at will be recorded and then you can save last uh, I think 60 seconds of the video. And there was just an anecdote that. Uh, there were two gentlemen, gentlemen in public toilet, and one recognized the other guy that was wearing a Google video, and he stared into, into him, and the, the small incident was created till the guy with the Google glasses convinced him that the, uh, the video wasn't on. Now, what that will be the next, next, next big phase in the, in the production of video materials, where you have basically video and uh, recorded by Google Glasses and upload it to the same internet. It's a bit scary. Uh, it uh, will uh, bring the question of protection of privacy and uh, that's one development uh, in which I cannot, I can just guess what the, will be the ultimate results and how it will uh, progress further, but it will be quite a bumpy road uh, ahead for the privacy protection and uh, uh, discretion in the in the social contact, uh, social relations. Yes, trust and knowledge is still the key point. Well, trust is, trust was one of the keywords during the Internet Governance Forum, or lack of trust, especially after Snowden's the revelation. That that that's clear that it's becoming one of the major issues. Okay, let me see if we have. Okay, if you don't have any other comments or questions, uh, I will just wrap up uh, this webinar. And the webinar was a mix of historical reflections about the CNN effect, impact on diplomacy on two functions information uh, uh, gathering and uh, public diplomacy. And we made a few reflections about possible future development, especially through the use of uh, Google Glasses and similar tools, which are gradually uh, appearing on the gadget gadget market. Therefore, CNN and uh, TV influence diplomacy uh, uh, strongly in these two uh, aspects: in information gathering and public diplomacy. And uh, the story has not finished, uh, it is continuing 
and we will have uh, some major development in future and the need for diplomats to develop new skills to identify high quality and reliable uh, video clips on YouTube and other sources. Well, we are seeing Google in many, many uh, play, uh, spaces and places, and uh, Google is uh, moving into Google TV, definitely, and uh, they're hiring also journalists. This is what I heard during this idea of Bali, because uh, the owner of uh, Amazon bought Washington Post, the owner of the eBay is establishing new media house. And apparently, uh, you know how it is with uh, among these rich guys, the uh, uh, Google uh, guy wants to also do something in the field of media. And that could be possible Google Google TV. They have all those uh, facilities uh, to use, use for that, and it will be a major development. Thank you very much for, uh, for uh, your time and uh, interesting questions on this specific historical uh, topic and uh, I uh, would like to to um, I wish I could send you the show the uh, pictures of the of the sea but it's uh, night here it's dark and uh, next time when I'm in Bali we'll organize the webinar in the morning good all the best. Have a nice day. Uh, and uh, till the next webinar, um, I send uh, my best regards and uh, and uh, see you soon. All the best. Bye bye.